the Savannah Ecosystem. An ecosystem is a community with living and non-living organisms such as animals, trees and water. Savannah is an ecosystem that is usually a very warm region and is most likely to be found closer to the equator. They are located in Africa, Australia, South America, India and Southeast Asia. Savannas have a large number of trees and bushes that cover the land. There is not enough water in it for the savannah to have forest. The temperature of the savannah is very warm through the whole year. The winter in the savannah is very dry and does not get much rain. There is also the savannah summer season where it is very wet. The average rainfall is around 4 inches of rain. There are many types of animals found at the savannah. You can find elephants, zebras, rhinos, gazelles, hyenas, cheetahs and lions. The food wet in the savannah consists of the primary producers, the primary consumers, the secondary consumers and the tertiary consumers, also known as predators. The primary producers in the savannah is a star grass, red oak grass and acacia tree. The primary consumer of the savannah include the grasshopper, harvester ant, topi, termite, warthog, dung beetle, the hare wild beast, Thompson's gazelle, impala, and the mouse. The secondary consumers are the pangolin, aardvark, and mongoose. The predators of the savannah are the wild hog, hyena, lion, cheetah, caracal, serval, rumpel's vulture, and the tawny eagle. Predator-prey relationships are also known as parasitism. This is the relationship between a predator and a prey, but one of these is being benefited by harming the other species. For example, the African savannah ticks and lions. These little ticks would drink the blood from the lion. This is good for the ticks because they are getting food, but this is harming the lion. The lion may get the disease from this. Competition in the savannah is very common, just like the competition everywhere else we know. An example of competition in the savannah is between grass and the acacia tree. These both compete for water and there was a study proving that if there was grass removed from the savannah, the acacia tree would grow a lot more. There are many different cycles that every ecosystem needs and in the savannah there is the water cycle, the carbon cycle and the nitrogen cycle. The water in the savannah is very important as there is not much rainfall in this area. As shown in the image, the water is from precipitation, also known as rain. The rain comes from condensation or transpiration. Transpiration is the process where water in plants sweat through the stomata. The water then goes into the atmosphere and then becomes precipitated. Evaporation is the way where water can turn into gas or water vapor and then is transformed into condensation known as clouds. Condensation then converts vapor into water and then moves into precipitation. The animals and the plants would need precipitation for it to have water to survive. After this happens, runoff would occur and this would create lakes, ponds, rivers. This cycle then continues. Every ecosystem will go through external changes such as floods, fires, droughts and human impact. Months in the savannah are very dry and do not get much rainfall which means it will go through fires and droughts. Human impact does a lot of damage in this ecosystem. When fires occur, it burns crops, trees and grass. This can impact the animals as the animals survive off these plants and other animals will not have food without these creatures. Droughts are extremely bad for this ecosystem as plants survive off water and animals need water. Plants will not grow during droughts. If humans are not conservative with water, this can do a lot of damage. Biodiversity is the variety and diversity of animals and plants in an ecosystem. This is very important for the savannah. Animals will not survive without biodiversity. The food web can link to this because all the animals there survive on an animal or a plant. The water cycle, the carbon cycle and the nitrogen cycle will not function the same way without biodiversity. Biodiversity is extremely important and that is why humans should not interfere with it. Humans remove the trees and other important plant life and this destroys the land of many living organisms leaving no future for this ecosystem.